What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about something I've been getting a lot of requests for, and that's how to study for USMLE Step 1. Now, I'm gonna give you a preface before I start this video that all everything I'm gonna say is my never humble and biased opinion, and two, I'm coming at this from the view of having taken both Step 1 and Step 2, um, being done with it, so now I have kind of the insight of, I've taken the boards, I know what's going on, but again, it's my opinion, It's and you guys, if you know from watching my channel, I like to do a simple, efficient, no crap kind of style of studying. I don't like to, you know, bring a bunch of emotion and unnecessary resources. Let's just get focused, let's do the exam, let's be happy, let's get on with life. So, here's what I think you can do for step one. The very first thing I kind of want to bring up is step one, unfortunately, has a lot of like accessory emotion associated with it. It's your first time taking boards. You know, you just finished the first and second year of med school. You were excited, you know, when you start medical school, you're all excited and it's a fun time, but it's kind of anxiety written because it's a new thing. You're going from college to med school or, you know, from a career or whatever you did in your former life to medical school. It's a big change. Um, and unfortunately, step one has a lot of like, emotion around it that step two doesn't. Uh, when you're you know, studying for step one as a first and second year med student, even then, everyone's saying something. Um, you know, People are gonna be reading about forums, professors are gonna be saying this is high yield, you'll see it on your boards, upperclassmen will be saying you know, step one this, step one that. You know, Everyone and your great grandmother is gonna be giving you advice on what to do for step one. My only advice for this is ignore it. You know, filter in what you want and what sounds rational, but at the end of the day, don't get caught up with all the crap. You know how to study, you know yourself best, you worked really hard, you got into med school, don't let anyone tell you what to do because you know best. You know, use your own personal common sense filter of how you like to study, how you learn, what your system is, keep true to that at heart, and you know, then take on advice from others. And that includes this video. This is not a godsend video, this is my opinion, it worked for me. I think it's a good one, you know, I, I hope you know you can take from it and modify it or copy it or ignore it all together. Do whatever you want to do, but take information, th take it in through your own filter and we'll do what works for you. So my strategy was quite simple and now I can look at it also from the viewpoint of having also taken step two, which interestingly doesn't have a lot of the same anxiety around it. I think when people take step two, they're, you know, they've gone through all the you know, the experience of step one, and now they're familiar with boards. So step two is kind of much more chill, more people kind of know what they're doing. Um, it's near the end of med school, so that's a different game. And there's already videos that I made for that one. So studying for step one, what do you do? The thing is this, step one doesn't begin the day that, you know, you start medical school, nor does it begin the day you start, you know, finishing second year and getting dedicated just to step one. Step two is kind of like how you think, it's how you solve questions, it's how you solve problems. So don't get too stressed out. I remember that when I first started med school, there were some kids who, no joke man, during the first week of med school were carrying around first aid for step one. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my, I'm already behind. Everyone's studying, what's going, you know, and you get all nervous and stuff. Dude, relax. During your first, in, okay, especially, I'm gonna say it like this. During your first year, just go through the school stuff. If you wanna pick up a copy of first aid and kind of flip through it, go ahead. Um, so I hear, like, so I took first, I use these things. I took first aid, I have, you know, I'm old here, man. Fourth year meds, so like I have my first aid in here and I, you know, I cut, you know, everyone tells you to do this. Cut the seam of the first aid, make um, what like binder holes and put it into a binder. I put it into this because I'm fancy. No, I, I, I had it in a binder, but then once you finish studying and stuff, you just, I wanted something to store it and I just put it in this thing. And what's cool about this is, or putting it into a binder as everyone tells you, Cut the edge of first aid for step one. That really is, I think, the Bible for studying for step one. Um, and then, like, as you write notes or as you get additional documents, you can just like open the binder to that page, open it up, and put in the thing and close it. And now you kind of have like a developing book with all your notes in it. So I'm gonna say there's only three resources that you need for US Assembly Step One. The first is throughout your first year of medical school, you know, you can pick up a copy of first aid. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. I'll leave a link below. 
check it out. Or maybe you can get a used one from someone, you know, it's not that big of a deal right now. Um, and just take a look at it, see what's in there, see what kind of stuff they're asking you. Essentially, it's all a first and second year to some degree. Um, obviously, much more emphasized on second year. So during your first year of med school, don't trip chocolate chip. Do your thing, study, get accustomed to medical school. You know, I made a video about how to make the first year totally manageable. First year of med school, in my opinion, is get into like the groove of things. Learn how to study in medical school. Learn what, you know, how you learn, whether it's small group, lecture, sitting at home and reading, whatever it may be. This is, you know, more of a continuation of discovery time. So during your first year, don't really stress out too much about step one because there's no point to stressing out. It don't help. Just practice learning, um, le you know, figure out what works best for you, go to class, engage with your friends, have fun. That's what first year is about, getting into the groove. And that's it. Second year of med school, now it kind of becomes important because during your second year at most universities, you're gonna have path, micro, farm, and maybe some other things. And during first year, you had more of like raw basic science, like, um, what do you have, like biochem, anatomy, neuroscience, genetics, like really basic stuff during your first year. And second year, it gets more clinical. Path is the money maker during second year. Um, that's why I think, so like when I studied, I had two books and one Q bank and that's it. When I actually studied for first aid, so my recommendation is going to be two books and one Q bank. But when I was studying for step one, I didn't have the hindsight that I had now. And you know, the hindsight I developed when I was studying for step two. So I was kind of like one of those kids who wasted some time in the beginning, just realizing that, man, there's a lot of crap out there I'm wasting my time on. So here's what I broke it down to. You know, during your second year, I would pick up a copy of First Aid and just see what's in there. And you can start filling in notes if you like. It's up to you. Some people don't, up to you. Um, don't start if you don't want to. But I did, because during my second year, because I was like, let's see what's in First Aid. Um, and because as you take, PATH is like the money maker on step two, I mean on step one, excuse me, because most things are oriented towards PATH. There's micro, there's farm, there's biochem. All these things are, this basic science is in there rooted in the question prompt. Um, so when you study for a path during your clinical years, take it seriously. Um, when I studied path, I used pathoma. Um, so if you don't know, you know, I don't get promoted from by pathoma or, or really anyone, actually anyone at all. So I don't, I don't make any money from anything as you know, you guys know. So I use pathoma, um, during when I was studying for path, we had like a humongous textbook that was given to us for, um, our path class. I use that as a reference. Um, but I read Pathoma and I watched the videos that came with it. I went to my path lectures and that was that. And then for micro, I've already made all these videos on what resources I used. But Pathoma I like. Pathoma I did the same thing. I cut it, I did the thing, and I you know, put it into a binder and then you, know, you have like Pathoma here. What I liked about having two resources for, patho you know, for step one, I have my books and I have my Q bank. So for my books, I had these two things. I had Pathoma, all right, and I had, oops, and then I had First Aid for Step One. The reason why I had two resources as opposed to just one, um, many people just have First Aid and they have their Q Bank. The reason why I threw in Pathoma was I just wanted to have because I, I was very comfortable with Pathoma. I all my path like notes were in there, so it was just my own personal preference. So. Now, what do we have set up? We got a, we got books set up, two books, maybe one if you want, first aid by itself or first aid in path, and you're gonna have a cue bank. This strategy is identical to the one that I talked about in my step two video. So what are you gonna do? In my opinion, don't get distracted by having a ton of resources. Keep it simple. Two is more than enough. A cue bank and a book, you're good to go. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna wake up and you're like, you know what? I just finished second year. I spent all this time studying first and second year. I've been going through all these classes, took all these tests, took all these shelves. Um, you know, I've been kind of flipping through first day, doing a little bit of this and that. I, you know, some of my friends started doing Q banks. You know, maybe I did some Q bank during second year. Maybe I did none. Whatever. The day has come, second year has gone through, and now you have like dedicated, most schools will give you dedicated step one studying time, a month, a few weeks, I don't know, every school is different. 
So now it's like, okay, first day, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna walk you through like a day setup and then you just kind of repeat until the test day. So what I did was you open up a QBank. I exclusively used USMLE World for step one. I didn't use you know USMLE RX or Kaplan, nothing against those guys. I just didn't want them because U World, I'll just tell you, is so much like the real test, it's insane. Um, I don't know how they get the content that close. I don't know how they get the questions so well written. Um, I, again, I'm not promoted by U World to say any of this. Um, I just I just thought it's a solid resource and I liked it for step one and step two. And everyone in the world kind of seems to use U World, so it's not like I'm saying anything new here. So what I did was I just started a block of U World, opened it up, you know, did the block. Don't tell yourself, you know what, here's what I'm gonna do. This is like an amateur strategy. This is a strategy I started with when I was studying for step one because I didn't know any better. Um, and that's like, I was like, dude, I should review a bunch of content and then I should start doing my Q bank. Um, not a good idea, in my opinion. Maybe it works for you. But you have limited time, keep it efficient, keep it high yield. So what I now know in hindsight, what I did for step two, and what I did halfway through my step one studying, which wasn't very fun, you know, just talk about adding anxiety to an anxious moment, I switched to the technique of starting the day with doing a block of U World, you know, dedicated full test time mode, not tutor, you know, you just do a full block and you make it real. You turn off all the accessories, you turn off your um, cell phone, no distractions. For that hour you're doing that block, you're doing nothing but that block. You got a paper and pen just like you do on test day and that's it. I'd do the block and I'd be done with it and then I'd spend like two or so hours or more going through each and every question, carefully reading each one um, and learning. And that's the key. That's why I think like you should just pick one QBank and stick with it and really delve into it. Um, because reading the QBank answers is where you're gonna do a lot of learning. So think about the QBank not as a way to test yourself, but as a way to test yourself and learn a lot. QBank has a, you know, if you were to take all the text in UWorld and put it into a book, it'd probably be a big book. So, you know, in a way, by doing the QBank, you're doing two things. You know, as is true with these standardized exams, you're being tested on your test taking strategies and your knowledge base. The benefit of these QBanks is that, you know, you're learning test taking strategies by doing each question, you know, looking at the answers later and being like, you know what, I could have probably figured this out just from test taking strategy, or even if I didn't really know the answer, I could have excluded other ones and figured it out. So over time, just by doing them very seriously, like as you do the test and then reviewing them and thinking, you'll realize you'll, you'll develop through practice test taking strategies. Um, so that's like one thing you'll just knock out because that's half of what the test is testing you and that's how you do these exams. Um, just by doing you world carefully and learning from it and learning from your errors, um, you'll develop your test taking strategy. For the knowledge base, it's two things. One, it's you world again. Um, all that writing for the answers is stuff you're reading. So don't think that you know, you're just testing yourself. You're testing yourself, learning test taking strategies and learning a lot because you're reading each and every, so it's a multiple choice question, you'll read the little paragraph for A and B and C, et cetera, and it'll have that big chunk at the bottom which you'll read as well. But what do you do with all that reading? You know, you're gonna read it carefully, and these are like the books you're reading. So what I would do, and I think what a lot of people do, is you then flip open to that page in first aid of whatever the section is, and then you like just in, you know fill in your notes from UWorld. You'll read about it in here, you can Google it. The point being, you're gonna see a topic in a UWorld question, you're gonna read what's in UWorld. You'll get it or you won't. Um, and if you sit somewhere in the middle as well, you know, and then like you look into first aid, you see what first aid's saying about it. Um, you can write in notes from UWorld, and that's really all you're gonna do. The point is you're getting familiar with questions and you're reviewing really high yield topics through UWorld and also through first aid. I also use Pathoma just because I like, I think you know having a dedicated tiny little book to pathology is nice. Um, you can use a more elaborate one, but you know first aid alone for path, I just liked having Pathoma on the side. All it did for me was when I was reading a question and I was reading a little bit at first aid, I'd flip open Pathoma real quick and I'd be like, is there anything in here that I think is like really kind of cool or that I just would like to add or not? Um, and a lot of times I noticed like what was in U World was in Pathoma, so there was a lot of correlation. Um, but that's all I did. It's a really simple test taking strategy. Do not be distracted by your friends who are like, man, I'm doing X number of blocks a day, I've done U World five times, I've read first day 12 times, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna hear a lot of crap all the time through. You do your own thing. You know how fast you read, you know how fast you learn. 
Do as many blocks as you can in a day, two, three, maybe more, whatever you can. Do, do a block, carefully go through the questions, read, look into first aid, get comfortable with the content, review, make flashcards if you need to, whatever your test taking strategy and learning strategy is, and then do another block, go through it carefully, etc. Take appropriate breaks, sleep well at night, eat well, you know, common sense, things like this. I've made videos about these before, so just, you know, at, you know by the time you're taking step one, you know how to eat and sleep well and how to take breaks. And that's all you gotta do. Don't get intimidated by people who are saying, I've done UWorld a bunch of times and I do X number of blocks. You know, you may be the type of person who likes to do two blocks back to back and then review them or do one in a review, one in a review, whatever works, do your thing. Don't get distracted and don't rush yourself. Um, as long as you get through UWorld and go through all the questions carefully and have time to flip through first aid again and review, as time goes on, as you slowly work through UWorld and learn and study, you'll do better, you'll get your good grasp a lot of things on you world that were wrong in one question will be the focus of another so you'll review content multiple times in different ways just by going through the cue bank and that's pretty cool and reviewing first aid on your own is also quite nifty because you kind of review the high yield information again and really the reason why I kind of started this video by saying you know, don't just start reading and then tell yourself you'll do UWorld to test yourself because that's not what UWorld's for. It's not there to test you, it's there to teach you test taking strategies and then give you a bunch of knowledge to read like a book. So yeah, through you know the later end of doing UWorld, you will be testing yourself because you'll have reviewed a bunch of stuff through UWorld and first aid and develop test taking strategies. And towards the end, it is a bit of a test. It is testing how you're doing. Um, so that's true, but in the beginning, it's not. Don't stress yourself out. Don't tell yourself, I'm just gonna review everything and then do UWorld. Um, I started doing that when I was doing first aid. Amateur hour mistake. You know, just start with UWorld, use it like a book, learn from it dedicated, throw it in first aid, review first aid. If you want, use an accessory Pathoma book and that's it, you'll be fine. Um, you can do, so when you buy UWorld, there's also the option to take like the self-assessment exams, which is just more UWorld questions put together in a block, um, and all they do is convert your score, like, like percent right, into a three-digit score. Um, I think everyone's gonna buy that. I bought it. It, it, you know, when you're buying UWorld, it's like a little bit more, and you, you know, you just end up buying it. Uh, for step one, there is the NMBE exams. Again, they're out there. You can pay for them. You can find them through upperclassmen. Again, check those out if you have time as well in the end. But the core concept of step two, I mean, sorry, the step one studying was, Get your UWorld cue bank, go through it carefully, really learn, throw in stuff into your first aid book. Those two things are your core, you're learning from your UWorld, you're learning test taking strategies, you're reviewing your first aid, you're putting your content in there. That should be a perfect thing. Don't get distracted by friends who are saying, you know, I'm using this flash card, I'm using this many cue banks and I'm reading this many books. Too much stuff, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen ruin the broth. Too much stuff spreads you through too thin. Just do your thing study you world do the uh, first aid book you'll be fine don't worry about it um, if you're not doing well you know talk to some of your friends talk to like an advisor get help um, you know this is not a point you're not alone so you know reach out to your community reach out to your school make sure you're doing well um, but otherwise you know I think it's my opinion on this strategy I hope it works well uh, let me know what you guys think in the description below check out the Facebook page you guys are doing a great job of talking to each other and creating a community Hope this video helps, guys. Hopes it uh, reduces the stress a bit. And as always, enjoy your studies.